Okay, another big news thing kind of happened today. I guess, uh, you know, the DGI thing was the last few days, but today, uh, last night really, uh, there was a message posted on the Drone Racing League Discord by TK. That's Canoodle, for the people who don't know. Canoodle runs all the sim races, announces the tryouts, organizes weekly races in... Um, no idea why. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, hang on. Uh, Think just in case some just problems. in case okay we're good to go we're good to go there's unfortunately there's i mean fortunately yeah. there's no erotic imagery it's just discord screenshots Ooh, yeah, so, so hot so the first one we got is from tk he says it's been an incredible past nine to ten years with us in community uh first ever drone racing podcast to drl um unfortunately drl is going in different directions has had to lay off a lot of us I don't have details nor answers to questions. Once I know something more, I'll let you know. So this was last night at 7.30, local, my time. Um, TK posted this. Uh, we saw a couple other Discord mods and people say that they had also been let go. Mm -hmm. And then today, we I dug through LinkedIn and found a couple more people. And this is concerning because we see staff accountant and event production have also been let go. Um, right. If they were just, like, firing the social team, or they were like, yeah, the Discord server, it's not worth it anymore. Be like, okay, but if you're, if you're letting your accountant go, that's not a good sign for your business. Yes, and then um, I was able to confirm uh, from another source that wanted to stay anonymous that they laid off most of the tech ops team, the event ops team, and most other departments uh, in the company, from what they said. And that seemed like a good, solid source. So yeah. uh, the other thing is TK just did a final race, uh, like an official final race before he signed off. Um, I might still be going, but they might have just ended it. Um, but TK basically said, um, uh, you know, a, solid, uh, a large portion of the crew was laid off uh, because of lingering financial problems. That's what they're claiming. I mean, uh, I'm not saying it's how layoffs work, right? I'm not surprised to hear if, if DRL had financial problems, and of course, we don't have official confirmation of any of that, but if they did, it wouldn't surprise me. They were hit hard in 2020 by uh, the inability to have in-person races. Like the, the earlier seasons had been extremely, uh, just very interesting going around the world, going or the country, flying in interesting locations, having in-person races, televising them, it, uh, I don't know whether it was ever profitable, but it certainly had some momentum. And uh, 2020, it seems like, to my mind, really derailed that. They had a completely simulator season for reasons which we are all aware of. And, uh, you know, as much as I love seeing people race in the simulator, it just wasn't to me at its core what DRL is trying to be. And I, I wonder if in some sense they never really recovered from that. Yeah, I would also, so in 2021, we saw a $100 million five-year deal with Algorand, right? So That's right. I feel I feel like that should have had some positive effect on the money flow and the way they did these things. I will also say, though, staff seemed extremely high. I'm not trying to point fingers, but like if you looked at how the public events were run from what I've heard, from what I've seen in listings and charts and things, like they had a lot of staff. And if you want to run a good production, great. That's, that's right. how it works. But right. I mean, they had a very complicated would, production. I would argue that they probably should have gone sim only for everything to cut all these costs so they didn't have to lay off all these employees or done layoffs ahead of time and planned all this out and done several right. packages and like actually done things properly to put the company where you know you can make it because it feels like like what is two to four live events a year doing to to, to really you know right. it, it feels like you're I burning think, money on something that nobody finds out about nobody sees I, and people can't attend right I think what you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is if you if your thing is live racing, and that was DRL's thing, we're going to do live racing on television, right? And we're going to up the uh, visibility of drone racing in a way that multi-GP style racing doesn't do. If you're doing, you know, nine live races, a television season, that's a thing. If you're doing, you know, eight sim races and four live races, that's like that your sim, you're, you're not the thing anymore. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, there's, I've, I've complained before about it. It got a little better, but promotion was hard to find. Links for oh, yeah. events were hard to find. Schedules were difficult. Like, and you know, who knows? Maybe they'll try to continue on. But with most of their staff gone, I don't see live events happening much unless they're going to like. No, you, you need know, staff for live events. I, well, one thing I've seen 
suggested, I don't know how true this is or how this would work out, but one thing I've heard is, hey, we needed to get payroll together. So we laid off everybody so we can figure out our money, get everything back together, and then we could try to do live races with contractors. I'm like, I mm. don't know if that's going to happen or how that will work out, but yeah. um, so that's I don't... what I've heard rumor, you know. I don't blame them for not going sim only. Like you're what you're what you seem to be suggesting is like we we look at the numbers, we see that our company is losing money, and we we see that we can't afford to continue doing live races that it, we will eventually run out of money uh, because the income isn't there. At that point you transition, you become you know you pivot to something different and you go sim only and now you suddenly you have to let go of some of your staff but you suddenly have enough money to keep the company alive for a much much longer time but the and flip side of that back to that right like yeah well that's I mean, the you, theory you but the company out doing lives that you can't afford like i don't know or maybe they were seeing uptick every race and then suddenly it died but like if you weren't for three years like yeah why do you keep doing it i don't know i don't i'm not running the company i don't see the books but yeah to me it never seemed feasible the way it was performing for the last two to three years right, right. like 2020 and they went sim only as a temporary stopgap to keep the company alive and keep the season going but then like, I wonder, like I say, I wonder if they just didn't recover. I don't blame them for not going sim only forever, though, because it's, it's like saying that if what you want to do is make a great car, but you're failing to make a great car, that you should pivot and make bicycles. It's like, no, I'm going to make a great car or I'm going to run this company out of business and go bankrupt. Right. I, I certainly. But they weren't doing that because they weren't saying I'm going to do 10 live races a season come hell or high water. They were kind of in the middle. And I think that in a way that's worse than just like fucking pick a side. Right. Sure. Yeah. I mean, maybe it would have been last year this happened if they had done all the live races. Right. So like, yeah, yeah, I don't know what we, happened we to the, what happened to the hundred million dollar algorithm. So first of all, I'm guessing when they so started no getting into crypto and weird mobile apps, that was the, the sign that shit wasn't good over there. Yeah, and I, mean, I think we talked we, a lot about that. Yeah. We talked a lot about like, what do you do at DRL? Is are you really that hard up? You know? But what happened to I, the hundred million dollars? So I suspect there was no official when when you look at the official press release, no numbers were given. Right. right. It was yeah. all outside people telling people what numbers were. Yeah. I expect it was a hundred million dollars over five years, either on contingency, mm -hmm. on stock. Right. on other pieces or both right or could it have been a hundred million dollars in weird ass crypto right yeah who knows we really don't know we really don't know was yeah was 20 million in crypto we, right we don't know because 2021 was like the height was that the height of the nft crypto craze so algorand comes in and is like we'll give you money not cash they gave him my my guess would be that they gave him a little bit of cash uh, but nobody's just going to write you a hundred million dollar check and say, "Cool, have fun." There were they, maybe there were contingencies, or maybe Algorand. Now, when crypto went bleh, Algorand yeah. couldn't pay out, couldn't make good. I don't know. We're just speculating. Uh, I mean, this is the this is yeah. the sign, Blunty, that your company is in trouble. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. I mean, you're absolutely right. I think. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's just like if you even. It, putting aside all the other stuff, if you watch the broadcasts of DRL, I think they're terrible. Like, mm. I th you know what I mean? Like, it's half no, of it is just... ads, and yeah. like the other half is like things people don't really care about. Like, oh, here's a build series that nobody wants to watch, and it's we're putting in so we can pad the ten races that we have into two to three hours, so we can fill this block. Right? I don't mm -hmm. know. I've I've never really appreciated how we've done it. And I feel mm -hmm. like it hasn't ever put like the racing first. It puts like all the other BS first and like tries to build mm -hmm. stories that nobody cares about around it and stuff. I mean, I yeah. don't know. I hope that they can find a way out of this. 